Let me get myself situated. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Randy Morris, and I'm the village manager for the village of Alto Pass. On behalf of our village and our village president, Scott Tripp, which is over here, <laughs> trustees, Joe Murray, he's somewhere, <laughs> uh, Julie Buck, Katrina Rinzaglia, Steve Grimmer, Jordan Chandless, Dustin Knopp, and our Kelly Ellis, which is the village clerk. <clears throat> we would like to welcome you all to our community and for joining us here today. We are excited to be joined today by our great governor, J.B. Pritzker, and the director, John Key, with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency to share great news for our community. We are so thankful to have a governor who finally represents all of the residents of Illinois, no matter the size, no matter the size or party affiliations of this community. He puts the betterment of every person of the great state of Illinois above all else. I will now turn the podium over to our great governor, uh, Governor Pritzker. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Randy. Thank you for your years of service and uh, for your caring for this community, because I know people feel it. Uh, and it's very important to have leaders like you in communities uh, like this, who, uh, where the state of Illinois can be of assistance and, and really help lift up the community. Great leaders make a, a difference. So uh, thank you. Thanks to everybody who came out today uh, to join us, the entire community. Thanks to uh, our Illinois Environmental Protection Agency Director, John Kim, uh, for coming here for the announcement. I also want to recognize the village president who was acknowledged a little earlier, Scott Tripp, who uh, helped to make this moment possible. Yesterday, I announced additional rent, utilities, and childcare assistance for Illinois residents affected by the pandemic. And I want to be sure that Southern Illinois families know that they can access all of those programs. You can do it uh, just going online at helpillinoisfamilies.com, helpillinoisfamilies.com. And I hope that uh, members of the media that you'll make sure and, and uh, advertise that and, and let people know uh, because we have assistance for many people who need it, especially after the you know, challenges of this pandemic. And we want to help to lift up people in their daily lives, help them recover from uh, what we've all been through. Uh, equally important is making sure that we make the long-term investments that will ease the burden on families and communities for many years to come. And that's what our bipartisan Rebuild Illinois Capital Plan is really all about. Today, I'm very proud to announce a $4.4 million grant for a new wastewater treatment system for the village of Alto Pass. That means that by next Christmas, residents here will have a safe and dependable system that protects your family's health and the health of the environment. And I know that this will also add to the potential for great economic development here at Alto Pass. Uh, Alto Pass is the first recipient of the EPA's Unsewered Communities Construction Grant program in Illinois, but many more communities will follow. Thanks to Rebuild Illinois, we're making $100 million available to build wastewater collection and treatment facilities for communities that don't have them. We also have provided an additional grant program to help communities plan their future design so that they can build the solution that works best for them. Over 30 communities have already received those planning grants earlier this year. 
This Alto Pass grant is just one of our initiatives to tackle environmental infrastructure from all angles. Since I came into office, we've provided over a billion dollars in loans for municipalities to construct, replace, and improve wastewater and stormwater infrastructure. Rebuild Illinois, our capital plan, also includes $25 million to fund projects that prevent, eliminate, and reduce water quality issues by decreasing stormwater runoff into Illinois' precious waterways. It also includes $50 million to help expedite the cleanup of environmental justice sites on the EPA national priorities list. And $100 million injection into the Illinois EPA's revolving fund program, which helps to support clean drinking water infrastructure all across our state. In short, we're making the investments that allow communities to get the safe and reliable water infrastructure that they deserve. So in 2023, when Alto Pass welcomes new visitors to its wineries and to Bald Knob, the community will be safer and stronger for its residents, its visitors, and the environment. And I want to thank you, and I'd like to turn it over now to our Illinois EPA director, really doing a terrific job in challenging times, uh, and that's Director John Kim. Thank you, Governor. Uh, and on behalf of the Illinois EPA, I am very excited to be here today to highlight our announcement of the award of our first Unsewered Communities Construction Grant. I had the honor of going to law school at Southern Illinois University here in Carbondale, just up the road, so any opportunity I can find to come down and uh, you know, take in the, the beauty of the area is just a fantastic opportunity. I would also like to extend a very big thank you to Governor Pritzker and the Illinois General Assembly for the passage and signing of the bipartisan Rebuild Illinois Capital Plan, which is providing vital funding to address the needs of unsewered communities in Illinois. So our unsewered communities construction grant program and our accompanying unsewered communities planning grant program were developed to provide some much needed relief and assistance to communities like Alto Pass that have inadequate or non-existent water collection systems. These are communities that in many cases do not have the financial ability to either pay for the planning or the actual construction uh, to repair or construct new or properly functioning wastewater systems. For example, here in Alto Pass, a public sewer system simply is not existing in the way that it should be. Individual residences have to, generally speaking, rely on private septic systems and seepage fields, and that can lead to illegal discharges to the surface, especially during rain events. So the Illinois EPA's portion of the funding that uh, the governor just referenced is going to help the community in the construction of a new wastewater treatment system with chlorination, with new septic tanks and pumps, and the construction of new force main that will make up this uh, new, uh, new system for the community. Unfortunately, this is a problem that, is, uh, that we find in more than 200 Illinois communities. These are small, unsewered communities that either have no wastewater collection system or a treatment facility, or they have a patchwork of decades old underground systems that often re result in illegal and uh, dangerous surface discharges. As the governor mentioned earlier this year, we awarded $1 million in planning grants to over 30 communities to help with that first phase of trying to address this problem, which is planning to design the appropriate wastewater collection and treatment systems. The problem here in many communities is they didn't even have the ability to take that first step to come up with a design, which would then hopefully lead to the construction portion. And so what we're hopeful of is that those plans will, as we're here today, lead to the ability for the application and granting of an unsewered community construction grant. Again, for these small communities, we know that funding is the biggest obstacle, and that's why the program that we're talking about here today and any kind of funding that we can provide is so important. Uh, the Rebuild Illinois funding provided to the village is going to provide proper and essential wastewater collection for residences and businesses. This type of funding, along with other sources, such as what the governor referenced, our state revolving fund loan program, which provides low interest loans, often with pr principal forgiveness, uh, are two important ways that we are working to help address the critical infrastructure needs of these types of affected communities. In closing, we look forward to working 
with local officials and contractors as this project gets underway in 2022 with the completion anticipated by the end of the year in calendar year 2022. Thank you, and I will now turn it back over to the governor for any questions. Uh, thank you very much, Director Kim. And before I take questions, um, I just want to acknowledge for all of you the terrific uh, working relationship that I've been able to have with your state senator, with Dale Fowler, um, working across um, party lines in, in a bipartisan fashion on behalf of economic development for Southern Illinois. And there, we could name lots of projects that we've been working on together. Uh, I've brought ideas to Dale and he's brought ideas to me. And uh, together, you know, there's an awful lot that's being built and rebuilt uh, because we want to create jobs. We want uh, more economic development. We want to make sure that Southern Illinois is getting its just desserts, uh, what it deserves uh, for the work that uh, you know that, that people are doing here. We want population increases uh, in Southern Illinois, and that means creating jobs and economic development. So we'll continue to work together to try to get that done. Uh, I know it seems like we live in a world where everything is divided along party lines, but every once in a while, a few people get together uh, to try to get something done, and we are doing that. So I want to thank you very much, Senator. Um, and uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions from members of the media. see one guy with a <laughs> taking notes in the back. Um, okay, if there are no questions, thank you all very much and, and I appreciate everybody coming out today. Very excited about this.